Um, it was actually the day before my first day of high school. Um, I had been having really bad shoulder pain, and I was a cheerleader, so like I knew what like a pulled muscle felt like and all that stuff. And um, we got an X-ray; nothing really seemed wrong. So my doctor prescribed me muscle relaxers, and I kind of argued with him a little bit, saying like that's not what this is and all that stuff. Um, and then he referred me to a specialist, and the specialist was who I went to the day before my first day, and she took a MRI and looked at the results and told me that I had to be in Oklahoma City the next day. So we went up there and I had a biopsy done. But my dad came in and his eyes were all teary. And um, I just kind of like looked at him like, what? <laughs> and he, he said that, um, he, he told me, or both of them told me, they sat down and told me. And it was kind of strange because I didn't really respond the way that most people would. Um, I didn't cry or anything like that. I just kind of like laughed, just like, well, out of all people, <laughs> of course it's me. And I asked them if I was gonna lose my hair and they lied to me and told me no. So I was like, well, then it's fine. And then, you know, later I found out that I was actually gonna lose my hair, but I loved being bald. So, I mean, it didn't really bother me at all. Um, mainly after I would do the really tough treatment at the end of the month, because um, that was the one that like really, really like knocked my counts out. And so um, I feel like I always had to go downstairs into the day hospital to get a blood transfusion or like a platelet transfusion because I was bruising so bad. Um, there were times when like I couldn't even do chemo, be like whenever I was scheduled to because my body like physically couldn't handle it. And so I'd have to go downstairs and get accessed and um, get a, like a blood transfusion or a platelet transfusion whenever I needed at the time and then to come back the next week and so then I could actually start it after you know the blood did his thing and all that cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, I was jumping off of the walls. <laughs> um, it, would, it was kind of like a shock the first time that I did it because I went from being so tired and fatigued and not really wanting to like associate with anybody, I was kind of like grumpy towards the people that were taking care of me. Only they knew it was like nothing personal. I just didn't feel very good. Um, and then like all of a sudden, like the button would you know in because the blood bag's empty. And then I was like look up and I'm like I'm probably as energetic as I was whenever I was like eight years old. Like literally just like running around the entire hospital wanting to talk to everybody and apologize for how I've been acting lately and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, it just made me feel like a thousand times better. Um, I feel like people don't really, like I know that they know that it's going to people, um, but it's hard to kind of like imagine the different circumstances that those people like need it for. Um, so I'd probably tell them that you're helping not only just like one person, you're helping like a wide variety of people and you, like you could be helping somebody, like a five-year-old girl who's counts are low from chemo or a person that is like hemorrhaging from a car accident. And it's just something that um, like people need in order to, you know, survive. Thank you to OBI and OBI donors for helping my recovery and helping everybody else who's received a transfusion for any medical purpose because it really does like it makes a huge impact on you know any anything that they're going through. They're a big reason as to why I was able to you know finish my treatment and why I'm where I am today.